just Joe Jones. Oh. Right. So, right, this class is about well, trying to help you get the most out of Strathspace. And so, what I'm going to do is just a very quick talk about what a Strathspace is, how I was taught it. Uh, none of this is none of this is nuclear science, by the way. It's all very simple, straightforward stuff. Hi, right? Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> and um, we've got a little set of exercises. I don't know if I have quite enough to go around for everyone now. We need to get some copies. Is this copy of this already still available? Um, and in. We'll, we'll probably spend most of the time looking at these little exercises because the thing about Strathspeys is they're mostly quite predictable. They mostly contain little sets of notes, little... Excuse me. It's okay, come on. Yes, John. Right. Uh, I, 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 I said he wasn't coming. <laughs> Who said I wasn't? Yeah, yeah Strathspeys are mostly quite predictable in the sense that they all contain little passages of notes that occur frequently, little triplet runs, you know, little, uh, this is all going well. I'll just, <laughs> we just got out of our head runs. Good, so all right, class is expanding by the minute. <laughs> I was just saying, I was just going to talk briefly about what Astrospay is and so on, how I was maybe taught it, but also spend most of the time looking at little exercises that will help you that you can apply to pretty much most Strathspeys because lots of the little note groupings in Strathspeys occur and reoccur across a whole range of tunes and I've got a selection of tunes where we can pick out passages and show you that. And then maybe at the end some of you you're willing, I can hear you play a little bit of a suspe maybe you're working on. I might pick on some of you that were competing, maybe, and uh, see if there's any little pointers that we can give. We won't have time to go around everyone, but if you listen carefully to those that I do pick on, then you might pick something up for yourself. So, okay, well the first thing you need to know about a suspe, what, what is a strathspe? You can tell me. Mm -hmm. It's a dance tune, right? So it's a specific type of dance. It's a very sort of sprightly dance. It would be a tune that we'd play for someone doing a Highland fling. And um, the, that's a, probably the, the best way to describe the kind of rhythm is to be very sprightly rhythm. Now, you, if I was to say to you, eh, I'm quite sure a lot of your teachers have said to you, in a suspe, you make the long notes long and the short notes short. Who's heard that mm -hmm. before? Have you heard that? Is it okay. ringing in your ears? I'm quite sure you probably beat it into some of the end. So it's very, very true. That's really the essence of what you try and achieve in a suspe, really. The short notes have to be really quite short, otherwise the rhythm of the suspe flattens out and becomes very even. Okay, so I can demonstrate that, for example, with pretty much any tune, but here's one, Lady Mackenzie of Gaerloch, so it'd be... So, it's a little bit down tempo, but the point there, if I do that again, and then I'll show you an alternative way, you'll hear a difference. Okay, so in that first passage, hopefully, what you're hearing most of there is the E's and the high G's and back to the E's again. Is it? That's the real prominent notes. Okay, now if I, if I make the short notes that link them together a little bit more prominent, don't, not changing the tempo or anything, in fact I'll play it both ways. Can we 
immediately do you hear the, the link notes on that second round. Mm -hmm. I didn't change my tempo, I kept tapping my foot at the same time, but... <laughs> It seems to become much more lumbery, doesn't it, and, you know, less sprightly, okay? So all I did was I made the short notes a little bit bigger, didn't change the tempo or anything, but I think there you could hear, hopefully quite clearly, that the sprightly rhythm is achieved by making these long notes long, and the short notes, think of them as just transport to the next long note and you want to get there as quickly as possible okay so that's what we're going to try and achieve a little bit with this to space and stress space playing now when i was taught to place to space the, the man that taught me for most of my life is duncan johnston and he quite a well-known piper a very good teacher and uh, he told me to think of a bouncing ball and to just think of trying to play to the up part of the ball where at its highest point in the, the, the bounce, if you like. So think of a bouncing ball and just playing to the up part of that all the time. He never ever talked to me about thinking about strong, weak, medium, weak. It's very common to hear stress phase uh, being talked about, people saying, you know, in a suspe, there are four beats in every bar, because the time signature is common time, or four four time. That means there are four quarter notes in every bar, and the beats come on each quarter note. And so you have beats in a bar, and you also have accents or pulses, if you like. And so some people would say. On the first beat, you put the strong accent, then the next beat, a weak accent, third beat, medium, fourth beat, weak, and then we come to the next bar and it's strong again. It's not really strong, weak, medium, weak at all, I don't think. It's strong, less strong. <laughs> yeah, they're all strong, I would say. <laughs> don't think of weak as being weak. Think of it as just being less strong. So to me, I, 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 I tend not to try and clutter my mind with that way of thinking about this to speak. And I actually just usually go for pretty much strong accents where it is natural to do it, which is usually the strongest accent in the natural places on the first beat of the bar. And the other beats are usually fairly strong. And I try, I try not to clutter my mind up with thinking, oh, this is, a, this is a weak one coming up, or this is a medium one coming up. And just go for the sprightly bouncing ball rhythm and feeling the strong accent usually on the first beat of the bar is a simple way of getting the space into a reasonable shape, I would say. Okay, that's my philosophy on it anyway. Um, and in terms of the speed that you play a Strathspey, some people over the years at these kind of workshops say, oh, what's, the, what's the recommended? playing speed for a Strathspey? Well, I would just say that I could say to you 98 beats per minute. A good competent piper, professional great piper, might play 98, 100 beats a minute. But that's not going to particularly help you. For the, 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 the best answer to give you is to play at a speed that is within your current capabilities. Okay? It's far better to hear something played well, correctly, quite slowly and relaxed, uh, and you can tell the person is playing within their capabilities rather than someone's just fixated on a number of beats per minute that they just clearly can't cope with, you know, at a technical level. So I just want to sort of get that out of the way as well, because quite often get asked, what's the proper speed for this display? Well, I could give you an indication of what, you know, top level pipers might play, but it doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. You've got to think about where you are in your stage in your piping and what your fingers can cope with. It's far better to play something simple, well, down tempo. It's far more pleasing 
to, to, to listen to that, then people struggle away um, at a higher tempo when they're not ready for that. Okay, so I've got this little set of exercises now. Um, I have to issue them with an apology and say that not all of the writing of the, the, the note values is correct. So you turn a blind eye to some one or two of these, the first exercise being a case in point, and I'll, I'll show you how to play them. So the top line, which is incorrectly written, but the, the notes are at least there, is just about triplet runs. Lots of stress bays have triplet runs. The little groups of three notes. That kind of thing. Lots of stress bays. <coughs> and when you see them in a stress bay, you should always aim towards the third note, and that's why this is written wrongly, because the, it should be the third note that's the sixteenth note, and the other, uh, the, the first and second notes. So the third note should be the eighth note, and the, and the first and second should be sixteenth notes. So if you just mentally make that change, okay? Quite often, in, in, in some pint music collect collections, you need to look out for this. I think these triplets are often written incorrectly because you'll see them in some collections. There's three eighth notes written with a little three in the time of two uh, line above it. And that almost suggests that you would play them evenly. But you don't play them evenly in a suspect. You play it towards the third note. <laughs> Okay, so that's the way to tackle it. Why is that? Why is it written not three eighth notes? Why is it not? Because I think it's to do with the sprightly rhythm. You know, if you were trying to get that sprightly rhythm, and then you, you need, like I've heard in the past. <laughs> Some people go into that mode when they come to that passage in that tune, and it's completely out of character with the rest of the tune. Is that a style? Well, I think if we just apply the philosophy that you're playing to a dance, and, the, and you've got to maintain that jumpy rhythm all the way through it, I wouldn't recommend it. It would be my style of play. No, I, I neither mind, but I just was curious why. But why would why it was printed evolved? like that? Yeah. Well, I don't know why. I, I just wonder if it's an error, to be honest, because most people would always go towards the, the third note in order to keep the tune in the sort of character of Mr. Spade. So I'm going to just go this simple little exercise. We could try that all together. And just aiming for the third note each time. <coughs> okay, now, um, we'll just do it slowly. Yes, what I was going to say there was that, see, I would be judging. Strasbourg and Yule competition, as I did yesterday. It's very common to hear people play Strasbourg and in certain parts they play a triplet run one way and then they come to another triplet run and it's a bit more clippy and tight and then they come to another one and it's a bit more open. So whenever you look at a Strasbourg and you see right, there's triplet runs throughout the Strasbourg, you need to make sure that you're playing everyone the same. 
So. It's a lot of passage from Maggie Cameron. There's about three triplet runs in that one passage. Right, it's not uncommon to hear people, particularly playing triplet runs from high A, where the high G that follows is almost inaudible because they clip it so much through here. And really tight. And then maybe they'd be a bit more open with the run from the D down to the B. So you need to think about consistency with triplet runs. Okay, anyway, this is a simple little exercise. So we could try this together. Okay, let's try it after two. One, two. consistency all the way and aiming towards the third note and you should be able to hear every note in the run right, one two So this is very common, this next one. Okay, does anyone have a name for that? The Strasbourg exercise. The Strasbourg exercise. <laughs> uh -huh. anyone, got a name, anyone got a name for it? Or known as Hachem. Hachem, yeah, well, I, I know it as Harachem. Harachem, Harachem, to mimic. And in the last class I said to a couple of kids to do my name, somebody said that. Hurricane. <laughs> when they played it, it sounded more like a thunderstorm, but it was funny. <laughs> it's just something to mimic, it's like tachem. Tachem, tachem. So, okay, this is so common in Strath's space, you know. So, the, this next line then, the trick here is to make sure that we don't linger on the C and that we get cleanly to the low A with the E grace note. And similarly when we do the movement from B to low G. So we don't want to hear... It needs to be... Okay. Just like the word harakam, harakam. Okay, no, harakam. Don't emphasize the, the C. Okay, so we try that one together. Okay, after two, one, two. Okay, we'll go on to the next line. Okay, let's repeat that line again. One, two. Okay, so the next line, a little continuation of that, but we have the cut from D throw to B there, so very, very common to get that cut D down to a B or, for example, a low G. Okay, so we have to be able to do a quick D throw followed by the E grace note to the lower note. So this next line. Okay. And 
again, a point that we make through this class uh, in just spear playing as well is making sure that you keep that degree of separation between the beats. Okay, so hopefully you would hear me doing that there. No. Okay, it'd be incorrect to try and practice it that way. You need to be thinking about a degree of separation between all of the beats, which you will apply when you're playing the tunes, of course. So. Okay, let's try that. Think about not only the embellishments, but think about keeping the beats separate. Okay, one, two. Okay, and again, one, two. triplets goes towards the end of the, 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 the of the G D and E grouping. So okay, so we're playing G D and E's in quick succession with the accent coming to the low way after the E grace not really. It's very common in stress space to have these quick triplet G D and E's. So we have Again, keeping the beats separate, so not doing running one into the Okay, okay, keeping them separate. Okay, so let's try that line. Okay, after two, one, two. from the high G down to the G, D and E's. It's not actually G, D and E's because you can't play a G grace note from a high G. So you'd play a thumb grace note, a high A grace note. Okay, so you need to look out for that. So. Okay, it's a high A grace note. <coughs> so again, keeping them separate. Okay, let's try that. One, two. Let's repeat that. Again, one, two. Sort of complete that little section. 
Okay, so the bottom line. crossing noises and in the passage here we have a, a very short C clipping up the high A with the D grace note on it for short uh, D's high A so we have Now, there's two things quite often happen is that that short C with the D grace note in it is sometimes you hear people playing they don't actually close properly the D grace note onto the chanter. And so they actually sound a very short D instead of a D grace note on C. So you need to make sure that you do close the D grace note. Oh. That kind of effect sometimes for people. Or big splatty crossing noise. <laughs> you might as well be hit on the ear with a boxing glove, you know. Blacky, eh, blacky. Or big crossing noises that we really want to eliminate. Okay, so you need to be careful there. And these are caused by closing the bottom hand before you've actually opened up the top fingers. Okay. So you push your high A fingers out so you avoid these crossing noises. Okay. And it's funny, I'm not, I hope, I hope none of you have crossing noises, but you can get into a little habit where you have them and you don't realise you have them until they're pointed out. I always remember the story of the Japanese boy that went to a summer school that was led by Seamus McNeil, who used to be the principal of the College of Piping for years and years. And he was a stickler for good technique, Seamus, and he said to this Japanese boy, you've got crossing noises and they couldn't hear it. So you need to go and practice it four hours every night to get rid of your crossing noises. And uh, the Japanese boy came out and phoned me, I hate you, Mr. McNeil. I hate you. I never had any crossing noises till I came to this school. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but of course he had. He just didn't know he had. Okay, so to avoid the crossing noises. So let's try this line. Okay, one, two. Now the next one is very common to have this kind of interchange between E doublings and F doublings. So uh, Okay. Okay, remember at the very start when I demonstrated Lady Mackenzie of Gerloch and how you, I hoped you would hear the long E's and the high G's. 
and then I flattened the rhythm out and you could hear the short notes. Well, here's the exercise for that, isn't it? So, we don't want to do that, we want to do... Okay, let's try that. Two, one, two. Exercises, little routines that we could work on, but I think they cover 
a reasonable amount of the things that you're likely to meet in the Spain or Strat space. So just to demonstrate that point, now I know some of you will play some of these tunes. I, I don't know if I've got enough to go around, unfortunately. Um, I'm not going to teach you, I've got, I've got four stress plays maybe to look at, and all I'm going to do is pick, show you here where you can pick out elements of just what we've done, mm -hmm. and so, so you'll find, if you could put it in the middle there, you might, you might already know these tunes, I don't know, and Okay, so Caledonian Society of London. Okay. Here's another one by Captain Colin Campbell. Invernochti. Invernochti. I play that. Invernochti. Do I get a good? Right, okay. Um, so, the, the well, the Dune of Invernochte, let's just have a quick look at some of the things. Uh, at the very beginning there, Comes, isn't it? So that is a good demonstration right there of you know one of the exercises. Okay, so and also to demonstrate that we don't want to lose the separation between the beats and do okay okay so in that tune um i'll just say there's a good demonstration of of that if, um Let's have a look at Captain Colin Campbell. Did I give you that one? Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
<coughs> so we finished off by looking at the, the Torlu exercises. <coughs> So right there in that passage, you could see where that would apply, mm -hmm. instead of... We don't want to hear that, we want to hear... A little triplet run. triplet run at the end of the line. Okay, so in that first part it's very important to apply not all that kind of stuff. Good separation between each beat. In the second part of that tune, count how many triplet runs we've got here. Four, was it? Yeah. Four beats out of 16 beats in that part. One quarter of that part is given over to triplet runs. <coughs> people tend not to think about them. They just think, oh, it's easy, but they, you've got to be consistent with them all. Okay? And then in the third part of that tune, you have this interchange between the doublings and the short link note. Now, <coughs> it's very important to hold the long note, keep your short leg notes short. It's like Lady Mackenzie or Gerloch, if I was to play, and you hear the Bs that are the short leg notes there, and the rhythm just goes flat all of a sudden. So instead of... I'm keeping it short link notes here. So same tempo but open link notes. You hear the difference, it's massive really isn't it, from one version to the other. So we have to go for that sprightly rhythm all the time, and that's how you achieve it. Uh, now the fourth part is really the combination between these triplet runs and what we do with the tornos. demonstrating that if you have the first principles right, the things that are in these exercises, you'll find them in the tunes in lots of places. Okay, now if you look at the Caledonian Society of London, <coughs> so take, take, take the third part of this tune, and you have the interplay between the E doublings and the F doublings. And there's a cut up. But we want to avoid crossing noises and make sure we close the D grace note. So there's that might play the first part and the third part are very similar. But the I 
then you come to this big long passage. So right there you have to make sure that you separate all of these triplet runs into the separate beats. You don't run one into the other and you keep them all consistent. and hopefully let you see that what we've covered today will apply to lots of tunes. So now what I want to do, if it's of help to you, maybe have three or four of you who would be willing, play me a little bit of a spare playing and then obviously if I can give you some little pointers. John. So, Gemma. <laughs> Being the winner of the Swiss <laughs> Bay and real competition, <laughs> you oh, might that's start. Right. Yeah. That was right. Congratulations. Congratulations. But you want to play a little. I'll tell you all we're going to do is not going to be painful or sore or anything like that. It's, it's just going to be maybe a part, two parts of us to speak. Because I won't have time to do everybody's whole tune. But maybe if there's a wee pointer, or I might just say that's really good. Let me get on to someone else who I can find fault with. But, okay. <laughs> right, do you want to pick a little bit of us to spare and do a little part for me? Okay. Well, the one I can play with yesterday, who actually had the music for, the Dune, the Dune. So I guess I'll play two parts of the Dune if you want to follow along. The Dune. The Dune. And then the Nochte. And we're not. why you got first prize. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, but that was very, very good. So there's a really good example of what we want to hear. The only thing I would have just urged you to do a little bit more is the very first C, holding it out a little bit more. So you, you don't cut that up, do you? Hold it. more of a push on the first C, that's all. But that was very, very good. Have we got another suspect you're not quite so good at then? Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, I haven't played well. The U, she knows the U. That's the U well, and the cricket tour. Right, so. play me a wee bit of the U and the cricket tour. See if you picked up anything from the... Uh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so now see, I think you just felt okay. You did fall into the trap of coming off the low A at the end of the turn there, there. Instead of. Try and get the low A at the end of the turn. Do it one more time. That's it. Now that was much better. Let's just try and nudge the tempo up a little bit from there, okay? Okay. Oh, yeah. right. Nobody no. is okay. 
Who would want to use you boys? Anybody want to volunteer for a little part? That's right. She's over in the corner. No? You're too shy? We got a great two-piper over here. You two? No. Oh, I'm great to ask that. Right? Come on. You have to play. Yes. Just anything that's to speak. So just watch that you don't uh, over clip as well. So the that that E to O E. And the same with the D to the O G. I think you are a wee bit too tight almost. So just you can relax it a little bit. So yeah, try it again. Okay, I'll try that.
much to the medley, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it? Right. Oh well, maybe I could play with you next year. I know that tune already. So our next long C really just I think you were losing the opportunity to bring out the strong accent right at the start of the bar and at the beginning of each of these online bars. But other than that it was okay. Right, anyone else? Who are we doing for time? Was it 12.20 or 12.30 we finished? I can't remember. We are not. 12.20. <laughs> <laughs> was it 12.20? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, maybe if anyone has any questions, would you like to try a wee bit? I'll yeah. try. Excellent. So then it closed up to the E the first time. That one. Try it again. Just a bit of work on the decrease, but let's try the second part. <coughs> okay, now see, yeah, when you're actually doing that decrease, so you're kind of making an arm movement as if because you're anticipating it and you're not comfortable with it, I don't yeah, you? I, I, See, the work on it, I'm so concentrating on it, I'm getting worse. Right. So, when, if you were doing a D grace up from low A to C, right, and you are you going to teach me how to do that? How would you tell me to do it? Well, there are two ways. One is to make it very short B and close it to uh, C. Uh, but I've been working on it from a low A, lifting all fingers and bringing the C and the low G finger down together. <coughs> See, some people are just kind of make a bit of a stab at it really. Right. But the way I, I just tell people, you, you make a D and you close your top finger. And then you just get comfortable with that and slowly speed it up. It's, it's, it's very easy and relaxed way of doing it. Have you thought of doing it that way? Yeah, yeah I'm having problems in uh, John McCall's Arched Kilboy Castle. There's a D, Short low A, a G grace note, B, and then yeah, yeah, it's in the in the ending phrase. Yeah. Well, it's the same principle yeah. there. If you were really slowing it down, you just go B to D, close the okay. finger. You have to do like, execute the movement quickly in that tune, but uh, Thanks. maybe just keep practicing it away. But uh, the good news was that the way you were phrasing this to speak was quite good. <laughs> you know, you, you remembered what we talked about with the toddlers. Anybody got any questions about anything then? We all understand mm -hmm. stress phase. Has it been helpful to look at things? The only thing that I'm finding is somebody said to me that my thumb is too long. Yeah. And yeah. therefore, when I get to play, it's best way I'm using some just to get in. It's going to be a problem. Yeah. Is it? Um, I recommend that you put your thumb in line with that second top finger. Yeah. And if you hold your practice chances with one hand, that's about the most stable position for it. If you, if you move your thumb up, it becomes a little bit wobbly and that you start feeling a bit of tension there yeah? and then if you have it too low down it can give you a bit of tension as well but it's usually quite nice and relaxed if you just have it there and it's stable. Right, tension. 
What if you just try it like that? Does that feel any better? Yes. Try not to press too hard as well. Yes. That one? Yeah. That's mine.